can see interception, so it will be mostly seen in uh, young animals. Um, and then it will create also a secondary mechanical obstruction, uh, as nothing will be able to pass through this uh, interception. So they have a very typical appearance on ultrasonography with these multiple layers. So on the longitudinal image, it will create multiple layers like that. And on a transverse image, it will create some concentric rings. So here we have one intestinal loop and we have the other one situated within the lumen of the first intestinal loop. There is also an invagination of a uh, uh, hyperechoic mesentric fat in general together with this uh, interception. So this hyperechoic fat is here visible. We can see even better the hyperechoic fat here intercepted. Uh, so here it's the uh, loop underneath, well the loop that is uh, outwards and then the loop that is inwards and with the um, mesentric fat also uh, situated within this uh, loop there. Uh, what we can see also those hypoechoic areas, it's uh, some mesentric vessels that are visible. What we can do is put a Doppler, uh, call a Doppler examination uh, at this level to see if we see the flow still uh, present within those uh, mesentric vessels. If the flow is still present, it means that then uh, uh, the flow can still pass and it's a better prognosis uh, for the surgery, meaning that uh, in fact the intercession will be able to be reduced uh, and sometimes it won't be necessary to uh, do a complete enterectomy. If no flow is visible anymore in those vessels, then it's a bad prognosis and it will mean that uh, an enterectomy will be probably uh, required during the surgery because then the reduction of the interception won't be possible anymore. So, as I said, it can create an obstructive uh, mechanical ileus that will be secondary to the interception. Uh, so those interceptions, they are very... <coughs> common in young dogs. Uh, if we find them in a other type of animals, so old dogs or cats, we have to think that there could be a, pri a second, a primary cause of this inter interception, uh, like a neoplasia. So in cats, we definitely have to look closely for signs of neoplasia in uh, if there is an interception of a gastrointestinal neoplasia. And um, also foreign bodies, eh? so it, the, we can have both an interception and a foreign body in, uh, in dogs especially. Then we can have different types of enteropathies, um, so mostly it will be inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, there is different uh, histologic types eh, of those uh, gastroenteritis, so it can be nosinophilic, lymphoplasmacytic, uh, it can be granulomatous in case of a fungal or parasitic uh, problems. It can also uh, be due to protein uh, losing, well, it can also create a protein losing enteropathy uh, and some lymphangiectasia. So all these uh, things will be uh, uh, creating inflammatory, well, I guess clinical signs of inflammatory bowel disease. The problem is that with ultrasound, it's often not specific to determine them. So even a dog that has an inflammatory chronic bowel disease can have a normal aspect of the uh, intestines. Uh, so on the ultrasound, but it's not because it's normal on the ultrasound that it will be normal uh, on a biopsy. Sometimes uh, we can just see a thickening of the wall uh, of the small intestine with a normal layering or sometimes it can be just a thickening of the mucosa or just a thickening of the muscularis. Uh, if we see some hyperechoic spots or striations in the mucosa, it will be already better sign that there is an inflammatory uh, bowel disease, like we can see here, some hyperechoic spots and striations. Um, so that's in general seen mostly with lymphangiectasia, but uh, so then it at least help us to uh, determine that there is uh, something uh, wrong in this uh, intestinal tract. Rarely we have a loss of layering, it's only if there is severe pure granulomatous or granulomatous inflammation, so with those fungal or parasitic disease sometimes. Uh, 
Possibly we can find a mild reactive lymphadenopathy, mostly of the jejunal lymph nodes, uh, but it will be uh, really mild in general. So um, the diagnosis often will be reached only uh, by doing biopsies of those small intestines, either under uh, endoscopy or laparotomy, because the ultrasonographic aspect is uh, absolutely not typical. And uh, as we said, uh, there is a, it's possible that uh, those intestines show a normal aspect and still that there is some uh, histological lesions there. Neoplasia uh, can be visible with ultrasound. So there is different type of neoplasia of the GI tract that we can see. Uh, mostly it will be lymphoma, adenocarcinoma, leiomyomia, or leiomyosarcoma. Um, of course, it's often difficult to determine the exact histologic type of neoplasia with ultrasound. We need a, a cytology or histology to have a definitive diagnosis. So those neoplasia, they will have really a typical aspect on ultrasonography with the wall thickening. So here it's 8 millimeter, for example. Here it's between 8 and 9 millimeter in this cat. So thickening of the wall, hypoechoic, loss of layering. We have here other example. So thickening of the wall, more than 5 millimeter. Uh, loss of layering, so here for example we can see really well the sharp transition, so here we have the normal layering of the small intestine and then suddenly it stops abruptly and then we have uh, this lesion, thickened wall and no layering is visible anymore at this level. We can have also decreased echogenicity, so in general those lesions like we can see here or here they will be more hypoechoic. And we can have also um, some uh, localized loss of uh, motility. What we have to evaluate closely in those cases, if uh, we find a regional lymphadenopathy, that can be signs of metastatic uh, disease. And then we can see sometimes a possible obstructive pattern, but that's not always the case. So we have to be careful. Uh, with lymphoma, for example, they can create this circumferential symmetric infiltration of the wall of the small intestines, but then it won't obstruct uh, the lumen and then there won't be any mechanical obstruction with the large dilation of the small intestines in front of the lesion. On the contrary, the carcinomas are more obstructing, so then they can really uh, block the lumen and block the passage of the ingesta through the lumen and then we will have a, a mechanical obstruction visible with the dilation of the small intestines. So what we have to do when we see those lesions is definitely some fine needle aspirations that we can do under ultrasound guidance of the gastrointestinal tract lesion but also of the regional lymphadenopathy if there is one. We can also do some biopsies, but again, it's uh, better to perform them under endoscopy or laparotomy because those lesions are uh, generally not very big and the small intestines are moving. So it would be difficult to do uh, uh, this uh, biopsy under ultrasound guidance.